Uh, this is just me saying after I commentated over everything. Follow my Instagram, link in the description. Follow my Instagram. Yeah, follow it. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Antonio. Uh, this week I'm doing bench press, pinkies on rings, which is my Y grip for my upper body max, and a dead pin squat, one inch below parallel. Uh, however, it was a little bit deeper than one inch below parallel because of the hole like differences. Uh, it's, they're about two, two and a half inches. So if I went one pin higher, I would be at parallel. So I wanted to go below parallel. So it's almost two inches below parallel, as you'll see later. So here's me doing my dead. Uh, this is actually just a regular bench. This is my meat bench, comp bench. Uh, I did 225. Then I jump up to 255, I think that is. It might have been 250. Uh, pretty good. Everything felt good. Uh, okay, one thing. This is not a good setup for bench in this rack because they're in the back part of the rack where my friend's standing. There's like these bottom parts are connected to uprights so I can't put my bench further back as I want also those like J hooks for the bar are um, they're angled so it's hard to do a self on rack but in a meet I can get a hand off anyways so it's not a big deal so I go for the 285 I don't pause and I don't hit it and you know I've hit 275 in my meat and I was also 15 pounds lighter in my meat around and uh, I hit a 280 floor press, 285 pin press. So I knew it was just not a good setup. So I go down to 280. I I don't dive bomb it down to my chest. I actually slipped. Uh, this bench is not that good at this gym. Uh, that was one thing. I'm looking to get a new bench. Uh, so 280, it slipped down. But I was I did pause at the bottom because I had to recover. And I got the 280. Uh, something I was really worried about at this time. But actually, the day of me recording this commentary, I've done a... One at max on my comp bench again and had a huge PR. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, actually, no, you know what? I'll spoil it. But okay, here's me doing for sixes uh, 225 on this. Uh, it's not really one rest and reserve, even though it does say one rest and reserve. I didn't really care about the one rest and reserve because this is the last time I'm doing this exercise. I'm switching it out. And uh, my friends here has helped me on rack. But okay, so I did today, even though you saw me do a 280 there. Today, oh, so even though I'm bulking, since I've been doing these neutral grip pull-ups, uh, pull chin-ups, whatever you want to call them, it's in between a chin-up and a pull-up, it's neutral grip, close grip, neutral grip. Um, when I started doing these at a lighter weight, I was doing five, maybe six reps on the first set. Now I get like seven, like seven, 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 or seven, seven, six, or seven, six, six, like my rep count has gone up on them by, you know three, four reps total in the whole set of three, uh, three sets, but my weight's going up. So although I, with that being said, that means at least half the weight I'm gaining is muscle, which is good for a bulk. Anyways, incline bench, this is something I really wanted to work on because it's very bad. I noticed my flat bench doesn't carry over to incline directly, but my incline does carry over directly to my flat bench. And after my meet, I want to focus on overhead pressing for a short phase, just till the end of the year. My, beats, my meet's November 21st, so about five, six weeks, I'm going to focus on my overhead press. I'll max on it right after my meet and max on it again first week of the new year. Uh, why? Because I, I like to overhead press. It's just something I, I want to do. Like It's fun. It's cool. That's the reason why there's nothing scientific to it. Uh, I'm not saying overhead press isn't a good exercise, but the reason why I'm doing it in that uh, in my training is because I want to do it soon. And when I do overhead press training, I'm going to do a lot of incline. Uh, but this is my last exercise doing incline as well because I'm rotating my accessories. But anyways, what did I hit today for my bench max? 295. I hit 295. And uh, you mentioned to me, I mentioned in another video, I want to do, uh, I wanted to break a provincial record at my weight class juniors because i'm a junior i do compete in the open as well uh but junior uh 100 kg it, the record was like 291 292 and basically i need i wanted to hit 295 in the meet i hit that today and i'm three weeks out today so i hit that objective goal but like i mentioned uh there's some guy that can bench like 450 competing in my weight class so as, as a junior and three years younger than me, you know, he's just, he's probably like a, a top, like a powerlifter. Like, I don't know where his ranking is, uh, but you can like look these people up if he's competed before, I guess. And um, you can see like, even if he only hits his opener, he's going to get the record. 
Uh, but I'm going to change weight classes, honestly, to 110 kg. Because the one, I'm not going to compete at 110 kgs, though. Uh, that will be gross. I'll probably be around 105 to 107 kg. But uh, the record for that, my, my provincial, it's not a national record. It's a provincial record. is a 30, 303. And I've asked, I only have to beat the record by 0.5 kgs. You can go up a 0.5 kg if it's for a provincial or national record in my federation, uh, the IPL, the Canadian version of IPL, the CPL. But um, yeah, 305. It's 304 point something, something, something. 305 is all I need. So I need to get 10 pounds on my bench in three weeks. And people say, how are you, I'm not even going to train my last week. So in two more weeks of training, we'll say, how would you do that? Well, I get to gain like 10 more pounds. And my federation uses like a big, thick, sturdy, fat grip bench. And I PR'd in my last meet uh, by five pound PR, all time PR at uh, at a lower body weight than that 270 PR. I got a 275 in my meet. So with that bench compared to this bench I'm using now, and I could, I went 290 today, then 295. I think I maybe have been able to squeeze out a 300 if I went straight for the 300. But I didn't know I'd be able to because that's a 15-pound PR from this video right now. Anyways, here's me, 420, uh, deep pin squat. I, I did my ramp-ups, one plate, two plate, three plate, 365, 405. And then I wanted to feel out. I just said, hey, 420. I remember my first video was me maxing 420 on a regular squat, which I misstepped on. So I'm like, you know what? Let's get the deep pin squat at 420. We can see here upper back weakness. We already knew this. Uh, it is... That is something I'm working on, my upper back. Uh, I'm doing a lot of upper back for my accessories because that's the main stabilizer of the bench press. All, my lats too, but a lot of upper back movements train that part of your lats as well. It's just to you know, get a fat, thick, stable base for my bench, which I was focusing on. And then uh, also my middle back. Well, I, I do a, a lot of good mornings, right? So this is my last week doing these wide stance good mornings uh i'm doing 250 pounds here or is that 255 yeah that's 250 pounds i think maybe it's 255 i don't remember but uh yeah uh it was going good the good mornings i do switch these out next time for narrow stance but yeah this is doing my middle back uh my, my i'm not too worried about my squat honestly with that 420 squat i hit 430 in my meat and that was a deep that depth was honestly an inch deeper than I need to go in a meet, right? So if I'm just barely getting the cutting edge parallel and a meet, you just got to go parallel. Okay, one thing I needed to mention, I was completely taxed, completely done. I only got five reps of these per leg as opposed to my last like four or five workouts doing these same way. I got like eight to 10 reps, even 12 reps maybe a few times. Uh, I was just done. Like I have not done... if. All, for all my max effort lower days, I have done a lot of pulling lately and conventional pulling, not sumo pulling. So it doesn't use my legs as much in, in comparison. And um, I haven't done many squat. Like, I've been doing squats, but like, what were my last squat maxes? I don't even remember. I think it was a safety squat bar box squat which I only use 360 pounds of weight because that's an exercise you get a lot more at a lot less weight. So my quads weren't hit to that level of intensity and fatigue. Plus I'm at, I've increased the weight on my good mornings because I'm uh, sh like shuffling them out. I'm rotating my accessories. Uh, today you see, I, because I push my accessory work so hard, you see the burnout. And uh, that is why I rotate them. That's why that's the last time you're going to see me do step ups, at least until after my meet. Uh, here are these... Uh, again, I have no way to train my lower back. Uh, honestly, I'm going to be honest, I pulled my lower back uh, my last ME upper day, uh, which is going to be a few, like a week or two after this video's ME, upper, uh, ME lower day. And uh, that's because this is the only thing I can do for lower back. And this maybe, maybe it hypertrophies my uh, connective tissue. I don't think it does so much anymore because I've been doing these and the level of like conditioning just so I've done, I've been doing these, right? Like I, I need a heavier band and band work doesn't do much, but it does sort of give me some work capacity, some conditioning, but this isn't true lower back training, right? This is just something I'm doing because 
my gym doesn't have a hyper extension. It doesn't have a reverse hyper. So all of my body parts of my, you know, my squat and my sumo deadlift, the movers, I've been training them, but except for my lower back as much, obviously I do lower back, like my deadlifts, my, my speed work, my maxes, my good mornings, those train lower back, but not to, it's, I need more. Me specifically, I need more. Maybe I think a lot of people do need lower back, but not everyone does, right? You don't need to do an extra accessory. Not every single person automatically needs that. I mean, you're not going to go wrong doing that, but I do need that. I actually need it. And then here's the hamstring curls. Uh, on this day, I actually superset these hamstring curls with uh, some tricep, some dumbbell tricep extensions and uh, some face pulls. Why? Because I missed them in my upper body day the day before and I knew I was taking two rest days from the gym and the reason why I have to take two rest days is because due to my schedule outside of the gym not because hey I want to rest two days like if if I could do it how I wanted I would do Emmy upper Emmy lower rest then my DE days in two rest days or my Emmy lower Emmy upper rest Emmy lower rest two DE days or Emmy upper Emmy lower rest rest right like I, I I don't really like the actually no I don't I wouldn't do the rest rest I would do Emmy upper rest Emmy lower rest Emmy or uh, DE upper DE lower rest that's how I would like to have it if uh, my schedule allowed for it but it doesn't and um, these face pulls this is more prehab work really like same deal with the it's this isn't true hypertrophy of the muscles um, maybe a little bit, but this is more just to, you know, prehab work just to fix my shoulders up a bit. You know, I, I don't want to be too internally rotated. This is just for, it's a good, it's good conditioning, I guess, sort of. And the triceps that was hypertrophy work. That was like, I missed it the previous day before and I was resting two days before. And yeah, I'll be tired for my hamstring curls, but they're completely different muscle groups. And honestly, the hamstring curls are just for fatigue. So it's not a big deal if I lose one rep from my hamstring curls because I did these two sets. Just in terms of managing my time and like not my time in the gym, like my time just in my life, period, right? So again, this is the end of this workout. Uh, plans going forward. I'm still trying to order workout equipment. <laughs> I can't find a place that will deliver to Canada where I live that has everything I want. I don't want to order everything from five different places and it be subpar. So I've decided what I'm going to get. Uh, I've changed my mind again after pulling my lower back. I'm going to get a hyper extension and a reverse hyper. I'm going to get both of those. I'm going to get a safety squat bar. I'm going to get a Swiss bar. And I'm going to get like 100 to 150 pounds of chains. I'm getting all those. I don't care how much it costs. I'm going to get them. I just can't find a place to get them. Here's the speed work. Honestly, I feel like I'm going a lot faster now on the speed work. I do do my DE days in uh in slides, like sandals, like uh you know, the reason why honestly, like I'm just lazy to put on my shoes. My Converse's that I work out in are tight, like I don't walk around in them uh outside of the gym really, unless it was literally right after the gym because I got them not for comfort. I got them to be stable and sturdy and pretty tight. Uh, they're not tight where they hurt my feet, but they would hurt my feet if I went in a walk with them. And um, yeah, just the slides, my feet can breathe, but um, I it helps, it forces me to be a little more tighter. And it's not something completely stupid, like standing on a BOSI ball for balance, BOSI ball, whatever those little, you know, those things are, or like that, uh, I don't know the guy's name, but there's some personal trainer thing guy on Instagram. He's been on a few podcasts lately doing really stupid stuff with 90 degree joint angle, like messed up, weird banded, reverse band workouts, trap bar deadlifts with the safety squat bar on you, just stuff that's catchy with different colored bumper plates so it gets your attention for clicks. Um, I'm not trying to do that quote unquote functional training that's not specific to your actual goals. I'm just doing something small. And then here, incline. Uh, I'm really satisfied with these reps today. I actually did get like nines and tens, maybe eight at my lowest rep count for the three sets. But this is a DE day uh, that typically does happen. And uh, 
it, it is really diff I would be doing incline dumbbells, but my dumbbells don't go high enough in this gym. They only go to 70. So that's why I'm doing the barbell. So on my Emmy days, I have an Emmy, uh, I have a max effort bench, which I failed a, a max that day. And I went for another max over it, which I just had to do because I would not let myself have the same max that I had in my meet, which was months ago. And I'm 15 pounds heavier and I've floor pressed and pin pressed more than, right? So I did, I missed a 285 and then went for 280 after 275 which are such, like, oh, there on those rows. I thought I was doing RDLs for a second. I was just mentally tired. Like, I haven't been getting enough sleep and studying, uh, you know, just busy with, like, stuff outside the gym. And then you have the clips on that goes down. I pick it up, finish the rest of the set. I do promise I did the rest of the sets properly, but that this, this is not a highlight reel. This is my training. I'm not going to lie to you guys about how my training goes. This is how it is. Uh, you'll see the end products in my meat. Okay, speed work, I'm just at 50%, and I just added the chains on, 25 pounds of chains, just for fun. I just wanted to feel what chains are like, I never used them before. Uh, I was only supposed to do 50% straight weight. I didn't uh, adjust my straight weight, because it's only 25 pounds of chain, so it's not even 25 pounds all the way through, and yeah, I just I just wanted to do it. That's it. That's why I added these chains, so um, this is like not like something I recommend to do, this 25 pounds of chains. Um, this is just like, I literally just, I thought it looked cool, thought it was fun, I was bored. Yeah. I'm also using those slides again in these clips. But uh, what was my point? Of oh, yeah. So I was doing the Emmy upper day, right? Barbell bench press max. Bunch of attempts above 90%. Dead pin rep work for sixes. A few sets, fives. Those are very fatiguing. <laughs> and then barbell incline bench press obviously i'm going to be fatigued and not be able to get like only only like seven eight reps on the incline barbell on those me days and i got like you know nine ten on the d days and then here's the sumos you can see the chain setup isn't the best because they do on the top they do go on the ground they do touch the ground but with the speed there is a split second where they're off just because like the ricochet or whatever the tension but uh, I'm a lot faster at these. That indicates to me that my... These are in slides too, not even in shoes. That indicates to me my sumo has gone up a lot. Which I already knew because my conventional went to 455. Right? 455 in this gym's bar. And not, not that there's anything wrong with this bar in this gym. But my old gym had an actual competition Texas deadlift bar. With really aggressive knurling that will make you bleed when you touch it. And it's in mint condition because... It's locked away, and only people who are actually competitive powerlifters that give their federation membership ID number get to have the access to that equipment. Okay, so uh, just to really quickly wrap this video up, you see me doing the good mornings with 255. I increased the weight again by 5 pounds because I knew this was the last time I'm going to be doing this variation for a while before I swap it out for another good morning variation. So that's what you need to be doing with your accessories if you really want to push it, if you want to be that guy who's always pushing more and more and more. You're going to get injured. People say you're going to get injured. Of course you will, unless you rotate the exercise. So rotate your accessories, guys. Thanks for watching.